Hi guys, what this video is going to do is teach us how to use and what the midpoint and the converse of the midpoint theorem say. Now if I was you, I would just watch this video and listen and take in what is being said, and then I would go back and watch it a second time and fill in everything on the notes that you have. So let's start. First of all, the midpoint theorem. The midpoint theorem says if you are given a line joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle, so if you're given M and N in the picture are both midpoints. Now in this case they've labeled that the two parts are equal, hence M and N are midpoints. In this case you know that therefore MN is parallel to the third side. So what this is saying is if you're given in a picture that M and N are midpoints, this theorem tells you that this means that MN is parallel to BC. So those two lines have to be parallel. Now it also tells you a second thing. The midpoint theorem also says that MN will be a half of BC. So this line which is parallel is a half of the third side of the triangle. Now if you ever need to use this theorem in a question, your reason used when you use this logic is the midpoint theorem. So just to go over this again, if you're given two midpoints, the line joining the midpoints is parallel and half of the third side of the triangle. So let's have a look at an example. An example would be, in this case, you're going to be given a diagram of HELP, or HELP, which is a trapezium. Now first of all, being a trapezium, you know that the opposite sides are parallel, which may be useful. It says that M, N, and A are midpoints. You have three midpoints of H, E, P, L, and H, L respectively. Now what this means is there you've got M, N, and A are all midpoints. Now if you have a look at this, this means that there's two triangles. There's triangle HEL and there's triangle HPL and you've got midpoints, which means this has probably got something to do with the midpoint theorem. What we're trying to prove is that HP plus EL is 2MN. Now as soon as I see two sets of midpoints, I know two things. Number one, the lines are parallel. And number two, the line that joins the midpoint is half of the base of the triangle. Now, considering this has got to do with distance, what we're trying to prove, I'm guessing it's that part of the theorem which I'm going to use. So if I look at AN and I call it X, I prefer to work with letters as I, it helps me a lot. That means that I know that HP is 2X because the midpoint theorem says the line joining the two midpoints is half that of the third side. And by the same reasoning, if MA is Y, that means that EL would be 2Y. Now I think that this is probably the way to go. So let's start. So if I said let a n be equal to x, remember you can introduce any variables you want, but you have to then state what you're introducing. Therefore, hp is 2x, and our reason would be the midpoint theorem. Then I'm going to say let m a be equal to y. Therefore, el would be 2y, and our reason, again, the midpoint theorem. Well, this means that we ha can create an expression for HP plus EL, because HP plus EL will be 2X plus 2Y. Now, I don't need a reason for that, because that simply follows from what I've stated above. And MN is equal to X plus Y. Now, why does MN equal X plus Y? Well, MN is the combination of MA and AN, which is X plus Y. But this means that twice MN would simply be 2x plus 2y, since I'm multiplying by 2. And now I'm pretty much done, because hp and el must equal 2mn, simply because I've proved that hp plus el is 2x plus 2y, and the 2mn is 2x plus 2y, which means I'm done. Now let's have a look at the converse of the midpoint theorem. The converse, what a converse means, is it means the reverse. So if I give you another combination of things which you in the midpoint theorem which you were trying to prove, if I give you what you were trying to prove, can does that mean that the original assumptions were true? Now, not all converses are true, but the converse of the midpoint theorem is. So let's see what it says. It says if you have a straight line through one midpoint and it's parallel to the side of the triangle. So what they're giving you this time is one midpoint and the line is already parallel. So M is a midpoint and MN parallel to BC. So if you're given those two, what can you assume from this theorem? Then the line 
must bisect the third side. That means therefore N has to be a midpoint. So the other point that it goes through must also be a midpoint. So N is a midpoint, meaning that AN equals NC. And the second part is that MN must be half BC. So that's very similar to the midpoint theorem, that that shorter line is half the base of the triangle. Now whenever you need to use this theorem, the reason you use is that there's a line through a midpoint and it's parallel to the second side. So just to say this again, if you're given a line through one midpoint and it's parallel to the base of the triangle, it must therefore go through a second midpoint. Now both of these are not generally asked in questions on their own in the matric exam, but they come up as part of other questions, so they're very, very useful theorems. Neither of these you have to learn the proofs of, you just have to know what they say and how to use them.